Okay, my name is Evan Scheibel with CG Toots Plus, and in this quick tip video, we're going to take a really brief, um, but yet still kind of in depth look at the node based workflow within Particle Flow inside 3D Studio Max. Now, it's um, a lot of people aren't used to working with nodes because most things that are mainstream now uh, are things like After Effects, Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere. Um, and even 3D Studio Max, Maya, the animation things are, you know, kind of linear based with this timeline here. And um, when it comes to working with a node, a lot of people are very intimidated by that workflow. Um, and they kind of just avoid it. Some people kind of dabble in it here and there and kind of get the basics down. Um, but a lot of people don't tend to work, you know, uh, with nodes too much just because it's not so mainstream so my goal here with this quick tip is to introduce you to a very simple way to look at working with nodes uh, specific to particle flow in 3d max a lot of this can be transferred you know to nuke or fusion or toxic um, and one thing right off the bat is if you're familiar with node based compositing applications particle flow works just a little bit different and the main difference is um, what's called I guess stream injection I think that's that's the technical term for it and stream injection is where you add information into a certain node to be used later on down the stream now what am I talking about streams and, and nodes and stuff like that well if you see here um, we've got a, a little particle flow set up here and you can see various nodes and operators now um, each node in particle flow represents a group of operators. Um, you've got the first one, uh, then here, and then here. Now, the kind of the way that a node-based uh, workflow uh, works is kind of like a stream. And if you know about river systems and stream systems, what they do is they connect lakes um, and, and ultimately usually run to the ocean unless they stop or turn into a swamp or something somewhere. Um, okay, so essentially that's what we've got is we've got kind of the source, let's say the mountain here. Okay, this is where everything begins and then it kind of runs down this stream into this lake. And then again, it runs down this stream into this lake. Uh, so everything is, um, it flows one direction and that's about, um, that's the only way you can't, the only way to um, kind of uh, go back is to set up uh, a, um, you know a test event and send it back through which uh, we might take a look at in a minute but otherwise uh, you just kinda run through from start to finish so it's linear in one sense but um, the, it's it's still a, a little bit different because you don't have to have it um, uh, there's no timeline involved here okay so um, here we have just a simple setup we're not again this isn't creating you know an amazing effect what we're doing is uh, a technical look at the nodes here, They're the node-based workflow. So, um, and again, the main difference with particle flow over and against other compositing applications is you can't inject information to be used later. Now, the reason for that is each little node group here, or little operator group, is tr kind of treated on an individual basis. So what happens is it comes from this, goes into this, uh, through the stream and into this here, and then it, it goes through each event one by one. And then if it's a test event, it's sent out when the test proves, or when, the, when it tests true, it, it's sent out into the next event. Uh, so it's kind of an event base uh, basis rather than, I guess, a node base. Same same concept. Um, but um, so each event is treated as an individual. Uh, um, node there so you can't really inject like let's say you're working in in toxic you want to create um, you know let's say artificial depth of field later on in your in your in your composite but yet you want to just get that out of the way when you're working with a certain shot or a certain pass a uh, render pass so you, you can what you can do there is like add your alpha channel information kind of create a mat and uh, add your alpha channel information in this node and let's say 10 nodes down you can use that again you can pick up that information there to use that's not how particle flow works uh, you can't really do that um, there is some in movement that you can inherit from you know different things like that if you have your position icon moving you can inherit that movement down here um, but otherwise uh, it, it's kind of treated on an individual event base. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're used to working in compositing, uh, node-based compositing, you can't really inject information to be used later. Um, if you're new to nodes, uh, just kind of ignore what I just said or you know take that and 
<laughs> use it in fusion or toxic or nuke, uh, whatever you're you're used to. Shake, I guess, even still some places. Um, okay, so let's get let's get going here because this is a quick tip, not a tutorial. So um, we've got this scene here, real real easy. All we've got is a deflector plowing through our our oversized uh, position icon, sending uh, our particles to a v another event, which just gives us this little vortex here which creates the very very popular fractal deformations today uh, that's it seems to be everywhere everybody that, that dabbles in their particles is here you know all you, what you see is fractal deformations with a million particles and uh, it's so it's super easy to do uh, this is just one of the trillion different ways you can do it. So we're not gonna. That's not what we're doing though. I just want to show you how this works, and then we're gonna call it good. So we've got the first node here, which is the PF source one that creates for us an icon. I'll move this out of the way. That creates this icon for us. You've got a few different uh, flows here. We looked in my last quick tip at the preset flow. Um, if you drag that in, you get this. You know this here and I've got a few I've made for like wakes and boat spray and stuff but you, you get that here with all your presets and uh, if you want to save them again tools you just go to preset manager and save your flow blah 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 okay we've covered that already you can check out that other quick tip so um, then we've got empty flow uh, which creates for us just a um, just this node and, and only that one and then you got a standard flow which will create for you um, kind of all the necessary nodes you need. Well, some not necessary, but just basic uh, operators you need to create a flow. So that's uh, we're not going to deal with that. What I've done is I drug out just a, an empty flow. You can see right there it is. Just drug that out, completely empty. Um, and then I added a birth operator, which if you add that in, it automatically creates a new event. Uh, so and it creates it disconnected, so you don't have to worry about you know a bogged down uh, simulation if you're in the middle of your timeline. Uh, you see something you need to switch, you add something. Uh, it'll it'll add a new event disconnected. That way you don't have to worry about having to wait for you know five six different emitters to update in, in order to see what you're doing. So uh, you will have to eventually, but you won't be bogged down in the middle there. So I did that, and then um, um what this icon does is uh. It makes things renderable. Um, in, order, in other words, it sends the information to the render engine. Um, and unless you're using Krakatoa, which if you're serious about using particle flow, check out Krakatoa. It's um, it's called a point renderer, or now it's a, that's how it started. But now it's a um, it's even a volumetric renderer, which renders the particles without having to assign shapes or materials. So you can get them uh, in the renderer, which is really handy if you're going to work in compositing. Uh, if you're gonna, uh, I should say, if you're gonna composite the particles later, you can render those out uh, in, in a few passes, depending on uh, how many you're working with, and then composite those in later. So that's a really handy thing to check out, Krakatoa. And if you're gonna check that out, also check out the free version of Deadline, uh, which is a partitioning and render farm management software. There's a free version which gives you, I think, two nodes, um, which for somebody like me is perfect. I've only got like three. Uh, total that I can set up so uh, it's perfect um, and that'll allow you to do you know multi-million particles in your simulations uh, because of the partitioning capabilities so make sure and check that out if you're going to use Krakatoa okay let's move on here um, maybe they'll shoot me a few dollars for the plug there <laughs> over at Frantic but uh, anyway so we've got that the position icon uh, we've got a few different position uh, options here if we find them alphabetical order we've got the position icon and position object now if you choose position object you can add some geometry to your scene and if you have that out you can choose to have it the particles emit from your you know your edges your vertex your your vertices your surface your volume different things like that you can you can have animated uh, object position objects and all sorts of different options we might take a look at that in a later tutorial for now uh, we use the position icon um, and if you look, you can highlight your icon there. Come to your edit, and you can set it to a few different things: rectangle, box, circle, and sphere. You know, a lot of people overlook these, and they they try to do, you know, like use a position object, which is a little bit slower than this here. And uh, if they want a sphere or a, like a a box, they set the position object to volume. But you can do the same thing here. 
uh, with spheres and box. It'll fill the volume of those shapes uh, with particles. So, uh, okay, moving on. Let's speed through this here so we can keep this short. I've got a collision. Now this is what sends an event or sends a uh, the particles through to another event. Uh, it's exactly what it it, op it operates just exactly what it, how it's called like an age test it will test the age of the particles uh, you can go by frames or, or I think seconds and as particles test true and meet that age uh, criteria uh, what will happen is it'll be piped through to the next event which in this case would be this one I have a collision test which works uh, hand in hand with the deflectors you can see I've animated a deflector through the particles and what happens then is it sends those particles through to the next event uh, which in this case only contains, you know, obviously a display so I can uh, not too tablet friendly 3D Max. Um, okay, it sends it through to the next event, which in this case has a display. It's important that you have a display in every event. Uh, sometimes it'll, or most of the time it adds it for you, but sometimes if you make something and you move it around it won't add that so make sure you have a display in every event so you can see your particles and also make sure it's set to 100 um, percent okay so when the particles collide with that deflector it's, they send them through to here which only contains a vortex now you can see I have my influence set to 100 percent now most of the time people would say well that means that the particles are fully influenced by that specific uh, force and that's actually not true you're working on a, on a scale of tenths here so uh, full fully influenced particles are influenced 1000 percent by the um, by the vortex or by the force so I have it lowered a bit uh, just because I don't want it to fly all over um, and that allows me to get kind of this slower deformation that kind of this interesting look here and uh, that, like I said that ever popular fractal effect so that's just one of many ways to do it Okay, so that's uh, kind of a few tips there for working with, or a few, uh, not tips, but um, just uh, kind of the, the uh, generalities of working with event-based uh, systems here in particle flow. Um, also, a few uh, little pieces of information. Um, one, if you're really serious about working with particle flow, check out the toolboxes. Um, and also, uh, there's a free, uh, there's the particle flow freebies, um, now which adds some very, very important functionality to particle flow. Uh, two operators, especially, which are the stop gradually and the stop. Now, let's just demonstrate that here. Um, you've got nothing. I don't have those installed, but you'll, you'll, it's, you'll see what they do. Um, let's say I want to stop those. So let's do the age test here, and let's uh, test that at. Um, let's say frame 100 we'll, we'll do the test so um, we'll come back in I'm pressing 6 on the keyboard brings up my particle view let's do the age test at f by particle age test value 100 we will do a variation of uh, a little more let's say 11 um, and that just very gives a variation to the frame sampling so rather than sampling only frame 100 and everything stopping precisely on that frame it will sample everything from frame 89 to frame 111 and particles will randomly uh, be sent through to the next event based on that variation. Okay, so um, when that happens, they're going to be sent through to this next event. So let me just add a display here so you can kind of see. Uh, let me find the display here. Anyway, what I'm going to do is add a rotation, or a, actually a speed forgive me here speed I'm gonna add that and uh, as a display automatically for me I'm gonna connect that into this event uh, so they now it's piped through I'm gonna change that speed to zero with a zero variation and I'm also going to take like um, a rotation I'm gonna come in I don't really have rotation too much I'm gonna make sure it's set all to zero um, and I'm also, uh, just to kind of demonstrate what you usually have to do, take this spin and I'm going to set that to zero. Okay, now based on the variation of five frames, at 111, or 100 frames, it's going to, that's going to stop the particles. So you can see they stop. Now, that's what you normally have to do to get the particles to stop, which is, you know, it gets kind of tedious when you just want to do something simple like stopping. And you can see there the variation as they kind of red kind of fades into green. Um, so uh, the particle flow tools freebies offers like a stop 
operator so you can do that in one operator it offers a stop offers a stop gradually which essentially adds that variation um, uh, as that variation here we have 11 frames if we bring that up it's going to you know give us a little more variation there so that that's a good thing to get so if you're working with particle flow on you know at any level make sure you get the freebies from Orbaz uh, website I just Google it's like Orbaz.net or something like that Orbaz.com um, or Orbaz Technologies.com forgive me I, I don't know it off the top of my head uh, so check that out there's also particle flow tools box 2 which gives you really close uh, really accurate dynamic simulation it uses NVIDIA physics um, and I've gotten some pretty pretty good results with that I don't have it in uh, 2009 any longer I did at one point but not now I had like a, a beta version where I just kind of testing it and doing some training for it but um, so check that out I've gotten some really really close to even fluid simulation with that and also check out box 3 which allows you the same capabilities as Mac scripting in particle flow but you don't have to learn scripting um, and it, you can create operators you can give operators away to friends trade them around you can do whatever you want um, with that and it gives you really really in detail, in depth access to every little tiny bit of information uh, in the particles. Uh, pretty much, if you're a control freak over your particles, you want to get Box 3. So, just some really simple things there to check out. Also, check out Krakatoa and Deadline, both from Frantic Films. I think now there's uh, Prime Focus, I, I think it is now, or something like that. So, um, okay, and um, also there's a lot of good scripts by uh, a fellow named Bobo. You can find those at script spot and like like, like boboland.com. He does a lot of scripting with particles. Um, he also gives you a cool script there uh, to assign your particles to objects and object fragments, which will allow you to make uh, really interesting things there. So check those things out. I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, again, uh, Evan Scheibel for CG2s Plus. Make sure and stay tuned and check out upcoming tutorials and quick tips and thanks for watching.